Hello and welcome to CMC Markets on Tuesday the 8th of September and the weekly market update. And we're coming off the back of a rather mixed non-farm payrolls report, a report that actually saw US markets trade lower into the end of last week, a G20 meeting where there was some broad agreement about the various measures that China had been implementing to stabilise its economy and its stock market. But nonetheless, I don't think we're really any the wiser with respect to what the Fed may well do at its policy meeting next week. And I think that going forward is going to have um, significant effects, I think, on potential stock market volatility over the course of the next few days and possibly weeks. Um, Chinese data, once again, for August came in, uh, came in particularly disappointing. And I think with respect to the narrative on that, I have to take you back to events in July in early August where that is when we first started to see the really big volatility that we've been seeing in equity markets over the course of the past few weeks. It was those July trade numbers that saw significant declines in Chinese exports to Europe and Japan and prompted to the revaluation on the yuan and the current volatility in equity markets and currency markets. So. This morning's disappointing trade numbers, I think, are going to continue to feed into that narrative, continue to feed into further expectations of Chinese yuan weakness, further easings from the Chinese central bank, and could actually impact on Fed policy next week. Because actually, when you go through the guts of last week's payrolls report, or last month's payrolls report, while the headline number was disappointing at 173,000, there was upward revisions to June and July, the unemployment rate fell and average earnings edged slightly higher. So the argument sort of comes around to whether or not the Fed will raise rates, can they afford to, just based on the economic data out of the US. Potentially yes, but, and it's, and it's quite a big but in this case, it's concerns about deflation or disinflation. Those concerns haven't gone away. The Fed has an inflation mandate. It also has a financial stability mandate. It's missing its inflation mandate and financial stability at the moment is a little bit, you know, it's, it's, it's under reference, shall we say. So in that context, I think we're going to continue to find um, equity markets uh, particularly volatile. And I'm going to look at the UK 100 and the Germany 30 and the key chart points there because both those indices look very vulnerable to a little bit of a sell-off. At the moment we could get a rebound. We'll look at the key resistances there. Um, if you remember my video last week where I talked about oil prices, I still think there's potential for a rebound there. So if you want to go back and look at that particular video, please feel free to do so. It's in the library. Also going to look at the euro against the Chinese renminbi and whether or not we can expect to see further gains there and also look ahead to the Bank of England policy meeting on Thursday and the prospects for a significant rebound in the pound after nine consecutive days of losses. So I'm going to start the chart section of this video with the Germany 30. This is a four hour chart that we're currently looking at and as you can see we're pretty much in a bit of a trading range at the moment. The top of that trading range is just above 10,400 where I've drawn the horizontal line and the bottom of the range is just below 10,000 around about 9,900. A word of warning, we, just, we have just posted on the daily charts a death cross. Now a death cross is where the 50 day moving average crosses below the 200 day. So potentially that is uh, that is potentially a very negative sign. Now, that's not to suggest that we're going to continue to go lower. We could well squeeze all the way back to 11,000. But while the price action and the moving averages, the faster moving averages, stays below the slow moving average, then the bias will still remain to the downside, even if we get a move through 10,400 towards that upper moving average and those mid-August highs around 11,000. Moving on to the UK 100, the FTSE 100, again it's a similar sort of story. We've got um, what I would call a sideways trading range starting to play out at the moment. The top of that trading range is around about 6,270, which is the highs at the end of August. But we've also got a little bit of resistance just above 6,200, while on the downside we have a decent area of support through the 6,000 level. So what I'll be looking for there is continued range trading 
and a potential break higher if we get through 6,200. There's certainly potential to go all the way back to 6,400. But once again here, the bias remains for a move lower, but we could squeeze higher first. Now we've heard an awful lot in the past few days about potential further weakness in the Chinese currency and I, to a certain extent I think that is inevitable and I think to really reinforce that point I think we need to look at the Euro Chinese renminbi chart because I think in this context we've seen a significant breakout on this daily chart from a sideways consolidation from the April lows to the peaks that we saw in May. Now we've broken higher, we've broken above the 200 day moving average, we've peaked at around about 7.64 and we've come all the way back to just below 7.2. If we hold above the support, which is currently around about 709, which also coincides with the peaks that we saw in May, then the bias for this move remains for further euro gains and further yuan losses back to the highs that we saw in the middle of August. Now how will that play out? I think it's more likely to play out in terms of a move higher in euro dollar than a gradual weakening of the yuan against the US dollar. So certainly keep an eye on the euro dollar in the context of this particular cross because I think euro dollar, euro dollar could be the primary driver of this particular move. Let's finish up with cable, pound against the dollar, come off the back of nine consecutive down moves and we saw a very nice rebound on Monday and I'm paying, a, I'm paying an awful lot of attention to this rebound simply because it's a bullish engulfing day or a key reversal day. That suggests to me we've seen the bottom. We've seen the bottom, the tweezer bottom around about 150-170 and the potential is that we could well see further gains through 154 and back towards 155. Now what's the catalyst for that going to be? To be quite honest, I'm not really interested in what the catalyst could be. We've certainly got the Bank of England policy meeting at, uh, on Thursday at the end of this week. It's unlikely that we're going to get a change from the 8 to 1 voting pattern that we saw at the last meeting, simply because the economic data doesn't warrant another hawk coming on board and asking for a rate rise. The policymaker I'm particularly interested in is Martin Wheel. The data that we've seen since August hasn't been particularly great, so I don't think it's likely that we will see any further dissent from the MPC. And in that context, I think we could well see the pound start to edge a little bit higher against the dollar. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this week. Once again, thanks very much for listening. This is Michael Hewson talking to you from CMC Markets.